Welcome back to What RT Noobs for General Disturbance. This is a Char Future 4. It's a premium tier 9 French medium. It's located on the south spawn of Cliff and it's under the command of. Yeah, I'm not going to pronounce his name. <laughs> well, Bajavi, that's it. Okay, one Bajavi. Okay, he's some. Um, Submitted this replay to one of the replay sites and well, I saw it and thought well this one has to be done Because it's a fairly good example of the Char Future 4 But it is a very special one because it's his first battle in this tank. He got it as a reward from Frontline and Now he's trying it out for the first time to see how well it is and you can see He's still not even loaded as he gets to the Western Pass goes up the slope and gets to the plateau just beyond. Unfortunately, his teammate who was behind him got wiped out. And now, well, he's got an LT432, puts one round into the guy, and another. And the guy runs into a rock, takes the third round, and dies. He's got one round left, but there's another Char Future 4 coming down on him, and he's got a massive 38 second reload before he's ready. And that Char Future knows it. So all he can do is hide. He takes another round from the Char Future. And another. And now he's down to just minimal hit points. He gets rammed, loses another 140 hit points. And it looks like that guy is in reload too and trying to kill him by ramming him to death. He lost another 13 hit points there. He's got 24 hit points left. But now he's loaded. First round in. Second round in, and he got a fire, and yes, he gets a kill. Well, you'd think after all that, his battle would be rather short, rather brief. Well, you couldn't be more wrong. I think you need to see what happens next after this. He's got two rounds left from that clip. Remember, 38 seconds between each clip, and also remember... It's four seconds between each shot because it takes forever to load the shell into the breach. Puts another one into the Progetto who doesn't really seem to be paying attention. But now he's in reload again. 38.31 seconds. And well, Klaus kind of noticed that this tank has a rather long reload even though he got it himself as his reward. He noticed the long reload and he started playing music to kind of while away the times. This tank should, by all rights, be playing as a TD from a TD nest because it's got such a long reload and it's so vulnerable to damage that, well, if you try and play it as a medium, you are likely to come off really badly. Well, that T-44 has made its way halfway up the cliff. And, oh, Centurion, can we get a shot in? Didn't miss the first one. Oh, second one kills him. One more shot into the T-10. And one more to kill. Will he get it? Yes, he does. So that's his fourth kill in this game. In fact, actually, he got Demolition Expert there because he blew up the T-10 with that last shot, even though it's only a few hit points left. Well, they're winning this game 9-1 at the moment, so it looks pretty good. He's already done 4.4k of damage. And if he goes to the cliff edge here, he might spot some more of the enemy and get some more assist out of it. There's no arty in this game, so uh, he's kind of lucky there, because if there had been arty, I think he probably would have suffered quite a lot. There's a Lorraine 40 ton. Puts one in. Good for the second. Yes, nice. Watch out for the 100 millimeter return. He can't afford to get hit. If he does get hit, he's out the game. And he claims the Lorraine 40 ton as well. That's his fifth kill. So that's pretty exciting, considering he's only got 24 hit points and he's had that for the past, what, five minutes or so almost. Now, is there a TD up in the TD nest? Could be. He's just going to sit here for the moment. Yes, there's a Nudez up there. And it appears the Udez can't see him, but he can see the Udez because he just fired at his teammates. Well... He's going to see to that Udez when he can. 
Now the units probably will spot him. Yep. No sixth sense going off, but second shot miss. Can he get the third one? It's very acute angle. No, not getting in through that angle. Or that one. There was two enemy tanks down below him. Uh, well, they've both been killed off. So now he's moving up, but the question is, is he going to get spotted? The enemy's got 257 and a 430 somewhere way over there. The units has actually been finished off, so he doesn't need to worry about that. In fact, there's now only one enemy left. It's an object 430. He's got five kills. If he can get this one, he's actually on for a Top Gun. He's racing over there as fast as he can. Low hit points and all. Fires one quick round and, oh, just misses out on the Top Gun. Slides to a halt, but survived the game. And that's pretty amazing. Let's have a look at the end of battle stats for this one. Well, Bud Jarvie managed to get an ace tanker on his first game. <laughs> his first game. First ace tanker. And in fact, you can see it's the first ace tanker, tanker because he managed to get the scrolls underneath. And you only get that the first time. He also got demolition expert because he blew up the T-10. A fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle. A fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He ended up with five. An arsonist because he did set fire to that char fuel tour four and watched him burn to death. A master gunner for getting five arm and penetrating hits in a row. And a duelist for taking down two tanks who damaged him. Along with a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In this one he managed to get nine. And to top that all off, he actually ended up the high caliber because he did the most damage in that game and his win eight was 7936. And he did most of his damage with 24 hit points. <laughs> yes, just 24 hit points in the bank. Well, not all of his damage because um, he did kill the Char Future 4 and of course the LT432 when he did uh, have more damage, uh, more hit points on board. Let's have a look at the team score. 6,096 hit points of damage from that game. Yes, he was streets above the rest. The next highest scorer was the Carnarvon on his own team with 2275. And after that, it was the Object 430 on the enemy team with 2271. When it came to kills, again, he's got the highest number of five. One third of the enemy team. Uh, the next high scorers only had two each. The Panther 88, the Scorpion G, the LT-432, the P-44 Pantera on his own team. And only the two Object 257 on the enemy team actually had kills. In fact, there was only two, uh, three other members of the enemy team who actually had a kill uh, a more, uh, at all. In fact, there was a large number of the enemy team didn't get anything at all. They only got five kills uh, overall. When it came to base XP, yes, he's got the top in all three columns. 1,541 base. 977 to the Carnarvon, 957 to the Panther 88. He fired 21 rounds, got 17 direct hits and 16 penetrations. Damage of 6,096 hit points, of which 1,111 were up more than 300 meters. So you can see a considerable amount of damage was done at close range. Received 5 hits and all 5 were penetrations. Again, this goes to show that the Char Future 4 is a glass cannon. It's got a fantastic gun, but very weak armor. Anything that touches it is more than likely going to go in. As you can see, that other Char Future 4 was trying to ram him to death and was actually doing quite well up until the point that uh, he loaded and started firing back. Two enemy vehicles spotted, seven enemy vehicles damaged and five killed, and 952 hit points of spotting assist in that game. He earned 93,153 credits from the game. 46,577 from personal reserves, 139,730 credits altogether. And after repair and ammunition resupply, and remember he didn't actually fire premium rounds during that game because he didn't need to. The 105mm gun on this tank is very, very accurate, very good, um, very pe uh, penetrating on the enemy. 95,883 credits he took away. Received one bond for getting the high caliber, 2,311 XP, times two for the first victory, 116 for this being a premium vehicle. Obviously, it's a reward tank, so you earn less for the premium tier than you would otherwise. And 4,739 experience points altogether. So, an excellent first game from Bud Jarvi. Uh, I must say, actually, that uh, although um, Klaus Kellerman says he's got one of these now, he's selected one of these 
Personally, it wouldn't be my choice. Um, I wasn't able to take part in the yeah, front lines campaign uh, as others did, but if I had, I probably would have gone for the Object 777 version 2 because I've um, already commented on one of the replays from that tank and it seems to have incredible armor. Very difficult to defeat and it has a superb gun as well. So I think the Russian dominance is still continuing even in the reward tanks. But I think this tank, it is still very good for that gun alone if it didn't have a four second reload. If, Although, as Klaus has pointed out, without a four second reload, this would be way OP because you could just uh, literally turn a tank into uh, Swiss cheese in a matter of seconds. But uh, uh, it's still a interesting tank to play. But I think if you do have one, you're going to have to play it as a TD. Uh, I think Bajavi was very lucky to survive the battle with only 24 hit points. If, uh, if there'd been any other players on the team who'd actually noticed that he'd lost as much hit points as he had, they probably would have gone after him and tried to take him out of the game as quickly as possible because that gun is really lethal. So um, if you enjoyed this replay, please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel. And thank you for watching.